So these last few months, we have been covering all kinds of STIs on this channel. We have covered the obvious ones like chlamydia, herpes, HIV, but also more exotic ones like trig. But we haven't covered this one yet. Let me give you a hint. It starts off with a painless sore on the genitals. And when left untreated, many, many years later, it can cause serious symptoms. Symptoms of your nervous system, of your cardiovascular system, and it even can cause gumas. More on that later. Do you know? Of course you do. You saw the title and the thumbnail. It spoils everything. This video will be on syphilis. We will cover everything you need to know, so make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important information. For those of you who are meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands, and it's my mission to medically educate you, my viewer, so you can make healthier decisions. And remember, I'm just a random doctor from the internet, I know nothing about your personal situation, so always contact your own doctor with personal questions. Let's get learning. We need to start at the beginning. What is syphilis? Syphilis is a sexual transmitted infection caused by the bacteria Treponema pallidum. It can be transmitted through direct contact with a syphilitic sore, also known as a canker. Cankers can occur in, on, or around the penis, vagina, anus, rectum, and mouth of an infected person. And therefore, syphilis can be spread through vaginal, anal, or oral sex, or through childbirth from a mother to her child. And a recent study has shown that about 30 to 60% of all people coming into contact with primary or secondary syphilis will get infected by it, which is a very good reason to practice safe sex. On the bright side, the syphilis bacteria can survive outside of the body. This makes it very unlikely that someone can be infected by ordinary objects, like a hot tub, toilet seat, or by sharing clothing. Once infected, this will start the primary stage of syphilis. And within 10 to 90 days after becoming infected, someone will develop an ulcer, a canker, on the genital area, mouth, or anus. In 40% of those infected, this will be a single, painless, non-itching sore ranging from 3 mm up to 3 cm in size. There is also a 40% chance that somebody might develop multiple lesions, multiple sores. In 30% of all cases, these sores may be painful, and rarely, these sores can occur on other places than the genital, mouth, or anus. When left untreated, these symptoms disappear in three to six weeks, after which the secondary stage of syphilis starts. So, secondary stage syphilis starts approximately within four to 10 weeks after the initial infection, and it can cause a whole range of symptoms. Commonly, there may be a reddish pink, non itching rash which is symmetrically present on the torso, arms, palms of your hands, legs, and or soles of your feet. In addition, it may also cause condyloma latum. These are flat, broad, whitish, wart-like lesions that might develop in warm, moist areas, like your mouth, underarm, anus, and or vagina. Here it is very important to mention that these condylomas, as well as the rash, is very infectious, as it contains the syphilis bacteria, so be careful. Other symptoms secondary stage syphilis might cause a sore throat, fever, swollen lymph nodes, patchy hair loss, weight loss, and a headache. And rare symptoms can be an inflammation of your liver, joints, or optic nerve. Secondary stage syphilis may last three to six weeks. And again, without treatment, it will progress to the next stage, latent syphilis. And latent stage syphilis is exactly what it sounds like. The syphilis is still present inside of your body, but for now does not cause any symptoms. This can be further divided into early and late latent syphilis. Early latent syphilis can be defined as less than two years after the original infection. And during this phase, about 25% of all people dealing with it might develop reoccurring secondary stage syphilis symptoms. Late latent syphilis is defined as more than two years after the original infection. During this phase, people are less infectious and typically experience no symptoms of syphilis. And without treatment, this phase may last many years. Ultimately, about 15 to 40% of all people dealing with latent syphilis will develop last stage syphilis, also called tertiary syphilis. So late stage syphilis averagely develops within three to 15 years after your first initial infection. It affects multiple organ systems and people dealing with it aren't infectious themselves. 
In 50% of cases, it might cause gummatous syphilis. This is characterized by the emergence of soft, tumor-like balls of inflammation of mostly skin, bone, and liver tissue. These are called gummas. In 6% of cases, syphilis attacks your central nerve system. At first, this will be asymptomatic, but later on, it can cause serious symptoms. Ultimately, it may lead to meningitis, a general paresis, a stroke, dementia, psychosis, and or blindness. And in 10% of cases, it may lead to the formation of cardiovascular syphilis. This may cause an inflammation of your aorta or the formation of an aortic aneurysm. When left untreated, the tertiary stage of syphilis can cause very severe permanent health issues, which can ultimately be fatal. In a nutshell, syphilis can be a very sneaky and dangerous disease. And you might wonder now, how common is it actually? Well, I have the answer. A recent study has found that about 0.5% of all adults in the United States have syphilis. However, this number can be much higher in certain subpopulations. For example, in men who have sex with men, these numbers rise to almost 7.5%, which is 15 times higher. Syphilis is also way more common in developing countries, so keep that in mind. And if you're anything like me, you start to wonder now, when should I contact my doctor? Well, did you have unprotected sexual intercourse these last weeks to months? Or did you have multiple bed partners? Do you experience any of the previously mentioned symptoms? Or are you worrying of possibly having an STI? Then please contact your doctor. He or she can help you to find out the extent of your symptom and find out the potential underlying cause. Your doctor might do this by asking about your current symptoms, your medical history, the treatment you're taking or the medicine you're using, after which your doctor might do a physical examination and some additional tests. Some urine and blood tests and in women a vaginal swab test. If necessary, a doctor could also refer you to a urologist depending on the underlying problem and causes. And I've noticed that the like and subscribe button are also in a latent phase, which can be easily cured by clicking both buttons. Now, all jokes aside, these videos cost me a lot of time and effort to make, and I hope they are useful for you. If they are, then it would help out my channel tremendously if you clicked both the like and subscribe button. And let's continue. I'm a big fan of practical medical information. Therefore, I always try to include some useful tips and tricks. First of all, think twice before beginning sexual relations with a new partner. It's wise to first discuss past partners, STIs and drug use. And with a new partner, always practice safe sex, use a condom and use water-based lubricants. Get a full sexual health check at least once a year. And for those at greater risk of an STI, such as men who have sex with men, get a test every three months. Avoid using alcohol or using drugs as this can increase the chances that you will participate in high-risk sexual behavior. And beware of your own and your partner's bodies. Be on the lookout for blisters, sores, ulcerations. And if you find any, then please do not have sex. Contact your doctor and get a check. And lastly, if you're pregnant or planning a pregnancy, you and your partner should always get an STI test to prevent any infection from being passed onto your baby. If all my tips and tricks failed you and you visited your doctor and you just heard that you're infected with syphilis, then not all hope is lost. Because primary and secondary stage syphilis are very well treatable with antibiotics. A single injection with benzyl penicillin usually does the trick. Or if you prefer pills, several days of doxycycline or tetracycline are usually effective. It is important though that you withhold having sex until the sore on your genitals are fully healed. Otherwise, you can still pass down syphilis to other people. For late stage syphilis, the treatment needs to be more intensive. When dealing with neurosyphilis, your doctor might recommend intravenous penicillin G for a minimum of 10 days. Other forms of late stage syphilis can be treated with weekly injections with benzatine penicillin for up to three weeks. When dealing with late stage syphilis, current treatment options can only limit the progression of late stage syphilis. The damage that has been done cannot be fully recovered. And therefore, it is also important that you get regular checkups so syphilis can be discovered early and treated way more easily. That is also important. 
I hope you know now what syphilis is, what symptoms it can cause, and when you should contact your doctor. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to answer each and every one of them. I also made some playlists for more awesome information so you can keep on learning. So click on them in the description if you're interested. For those of you that did learn something and want to help out your channel, consider to click the like and the subscribe button. I'm posting weekly medical videos, which you can see if you subscribe, and you help me to reach my new subscriber milestone of 100,000 subscribers. I also have an Instagram account at How to Medicate for those of you that can't get enough. And I want to give a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Sebastian, who is an investigative supporter. And I will see you all next week with new awesome videos. Bye bye.